Hello YouTube! I am Pinstar and this is Pinstar Plays Dwarf Fortress episode 11, I believe? So, in our last episode, actually our last our last episode was the how-to series of how to uh, pl make your uh, nobles happy. Because we, we, um, we, with the arrival of the caravan, we were given the opportunity to elevate one of our dwarves into a baron, or in this case a baroness. Uh, Valen Rook um, has become our Baroness, and this is their uh, this is their holdings here. I added a few things um, after the fact uh, that weren't on the video. Here I added a little stockpile for finished meals, so they can have their own private stockpile of food, uh, just a little one because they're just one dwarf. Uh, and then up here, uh, stockpile for drinks and uh, mugs. Um, so we're gonna do, yeah, we don't need a bin, just one barrel, no bins. Um, and that way they have a means to drink. Right then. Now, the other thing that I was neglecting, uh, before, but we shall attend to, because this has been kind of our whole thing, is the traders are here. The dwarven traders are here. Meaning that we, our, our little toy gambit is, is ready to pay off. So. What we need to do is move goods to and from depot. Now, a couple of things here to keep in mind. Um, obviously, any loose toys that we have, including that uh, some of the more expensive one, we're gonna bring all of these to here because these are all gonna be punching above their weight when it comes to trade value to the tune of about 200% or so, give or take. But those, these aren't just the only toys that we have made. No, no, no. We have also look for you know look for goods in bins because um, any of the things were stored in the bins they'll actually be listed under the bins not under toys um and then look on, along here for what these bins contain you know you can see uh gem bins armor bins bar block bins leather bins there should be a finished good bins and here's well here's a toy we can bring that, but I, mean, I know we have more good spins than this. Here we go, a, a 46 item finished good bin with all the toys. Let's bring that as well. I think that's it. that should be everything. Uh, we shall request our broker to the goods. Let's unpause here, waiting 23 items. Let's wait for all of our items to be delivered and see just how much we can get from our uh, our dwarven liaison here. Hmm, Tulan has grown attached to an iron crossbow. Fair enough. I think that I never I've never made an iron crossbow, so that was probably just one that they came with, which is fine. Let them use it. One more item and we're ready to trade. We should be able to get a metric F ton of items from here. All right, let's see what the caravan has to offer. Uh, um that's it. 44 dwarf bucks worth. Oh, come on! Are you kidding me? Are you freaking kidding me? Oh, now I see why. So we requested bismuth and sight. Uh, bismuth, bismuth and sight. Yes, I think that's how you pronounce it. Those weigh 700 each. And the, our traders only have so much weight that they can carry. So they used up all of their carry weight on the crap that I requested and don't actually have anything else. Meaning all the toy boat value in the world isn't going to do squat. Uh, have, a, have a toy boat. One toy boat for all of that. And they'll take it. See you next year. I mean, I guess I could give a bunch of them to to as a gift. Might as well, since they still see the value increase. We'll offer as a gift. Maybe that will help us later on. But yeah, now we have a lot of toys. Now that's not to say that these toys are worthless. We can trade them to the humans. We can trade them to future ones. So we're just not going to get the super premium on them. Um, but hey, our, our dwarf children are, are gonna have happy times. Yay? <laughs> oi. Oi, oi, oi. Okay, yeah, you're done. We're done here. 
we have a bunch of things grow up. Um, our cook is uh, the bow. Our cook is going nuts with the masterpiece cooks. Guess their skills getting up there. Oh yeah. Also, our Baroness has um, uh, banned the export of something. Uh, I don't believe it is toys, though. They only ban exports on on things that they have a preference for. Well, if we go to the administrator's role, export of grates. So if we had ex if we had traded away a grate, uh, Valenrook would have um, been rather angry about that. But we didn't, so they won't. And I don't even think we have a great to trade away. All right. So the other uh, the other thing that we did here, um, I forget if I pointed that here, is we smoothed out this whole section here. Well, almost all the whole section. We uh, we're 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 building up our fort proper, and I'm still pondering if I want to. Um, I might need to trim it back from the edge here because just building the walls here on the edge might cause problems. Well, you know what? It'll be fun if it does. So let's just wall up as soon, as soon and wall up against the edge here and see see what happens. Well, actually, no. Now thinking about it, let's 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 be pragmatic here. We're going to do a three tile wide channel. That's not channel, that's stairs. We don't want stairs, we want channel. That way we are properly detached from, from our thing here. Now, the next thing we want to do here is channel down, because we want to actually make a moat. We want to, in, in addition to the elevated rise here, we want to make a moat. And actually, before we do that, we want to take away these slopes, because right now there's just a, you know, a nice gentle hill. Although I guess those will get taken away when we do the moat uh, anyway. So that's kind of redundant. So let's do the moat. Or at least begin the moat. This is going to be a multi-step process, folks. But we're going to do a three tile wide moat. Uh, characters can jump moats. Um, can jump a certain distance which is why you don't want like a one tile moat and a, and a two tile moat. Uh, there, I think there are some that can still jump that as well. So just to be on the safe side, we're making it three tiles wide. We'll wait for that little nook to get carved out too, so that we can continue our moat there. Again, work in progress. You know, dwarves will still be able to access up here through these stairways. Which reminds me, yeah, we have, we've got to uh, get those going and we'll do these one at a time so we don't flood with the, uh, cause we have to re-break through the aquifer on this little stair stack. Cooked another masterpiece, stray billy goat. All right. Uh, speaking of stray billy goat, now that we're starting to get extra, uh, animals growing into adults, that means we can slaughter them. Yeah, actually we have a couple of turkey gobblers and I think we have a pet turkey gobbler which means we can just slaughter the the wild ones yeah, and we have the goat so we can slaughter the others yeah there's our there's the pet goat we have the alpaca the male alpaca that we could uh slaughter though I'm yeah I don't think we're going to go too much for for that so we'll slaughter the alpaca I think we already got their wool because I have uh, sheer animals on repeat. We'll keep the reindeer because they make milk. Well, we have two turkey gobblers, but they're both pets. I'm not going to kill anybody. You can't even you can't even butcher um, a dwarf's pet. They, they they don't like that. All right, I think we're good with that. And heck, I'll make the goat available for a pet, just so because we're never going to be. Ooh, yeah, we're really. We're really starting to get the uh, the water down here. So yeah, we got to deal with this sooner rather than later. I mean, that's not the worst thing in the world. Heck, we could even use this as a happy accident to do some um, underground farming. Just some light farming. Let the water disperse and make muddy floor and then turn the mud into underground fields. All right, they'll be leaving soon. Good for them. <laughs> All right, looks like you're gathering uh, fruit here. Yeah, we're just vacuuming up all the stuff on the surface here, which is awesome. 
uh, pearwood bed. Oh yeah. Um, so one of the things I did in our previous episode was uh, plan out a bunch new bedrooms here, and I queued up in the work orders all of the furniture needed for that—the doors, the beds, and and what have you. And we're in the process uh, process of smoothing everything. So those will uh, get taken care of. So by the time we get ready for our next batch of migrants, which should be pretty soon, uh, because we, get, we should be getting more dwarven migrants in the fall, not, not directly attached to the, uh, to the caravan, but just sort of as a separate thing, we'll have more bedrooms at the ready. I believe 15 is the number that we're increasing by. But again, I like to get everything smoothed out before, uh, and actually, did I miss a spot? I think I missed some spots here. Way to get those. Not, not, we, that won't stop us from placing furniture. And we are slowly making our temple here. Did we um, get our altars? I think we may have. Um, offering place. Yes, we got our altars. That works. Get those installed there to further improve the temple. There's the migrants. I knew they were coming. All right, we were at 49 before. Let's see how many we're getting and see if there's anybody of uh, super notable skill here. 49 to 61 by the looks of it. Not too shabby. At this point, we're going to start to we're going to start to need to flesh out the rest of our, our noble roles, um, such as getting our sheriff and hammerer um, in place. Uh, maybe declaring a militia captain, but we're going to need more people in charge. Goat sweetbread roast. Oh, hell yeah, all that goat meat and, and whatnot. We're cooking up a storm here. 44 meat. Should be good. But yeah, we can handle this many dwarves. And this also should give us enough uh, warm bodies to handle another whole military squad as well, which we'll be getting up. Uh, let me throw down... We're still making armor for our uh, axe dwarves. Are we canceling jobs due to lack of iron or is it? are you just slowly going through that? Actually, let me check the stocks. Now that we actually have a, a bookkeeper, um, we can actually see what we have because they are actually actively counting it. Um, bars, 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 bars. Yeah, we have tons of iron bars, so we are not lacking for that. We have plenty of iron. So probably what we'll do... Actually, what I'm going to do is... I'm going to make... Uh, I'm going to make the barracks on the surface here for our archer squad here. So we're going to do a barracks... Put you up here in the corner and then we are going to make a new squad we're going to use the archer there's currently a bug here where you have to use the archer base in order for it to actually properly work as an archer uh, let us sign sign a leader competent markstorf eh okay and then let's find anyone who has um, marks dwarf uh, not Dana. Dana is Dana's working in civilian stuff. We do not need you in the military, Dana. You're 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 doing a bunch of other stuff. We'll add the hunter certainly, and then anyone else who doesn't have Marksdorf, we'll just add, if they're a peasant, we'll add them. Uh, competent Marksdorf. Competent bow dwarf. Yeah, I'll, I'll add them, even though they're not going to use a bow unless we trade for one. Because we, we can't make bows. But if we ever, you know, either through a strange mood or through trading with the humans. All right, then the rest of these we'll add for peasants. Anyone who's a peasant and who isn't already part of a different squad. A shearer. You don't really need that. You're welcome to the squad. All right, well, we have Bower. We can add one of our Bowers. Kimberlin's our bow, our, our chief bow person. A beekeeper? We don't have any bees at the moment, so we can add you. A tanner? Sure. And a glassmaker. There we go. All right, so we're just going to stick with the default there. Again, because there's a bug where doing custom stuff makes them not behave properly. 
We're going to keep them on no training schedule at the moment, but soon we will set up uh, archery training. That's that's its own thing, and I'll probably do a, a video detailing how to set up an archery training deal. Ooh, we have a mayor now. Now this is a this is a noble role that we the player don't get to pick. This is something that the dwarves elected themselves. But yeah, our mayor is going to need um, uh, is going to need a a nice uh, abode. Actually, they're going to need the they're they're going to need the baron treatment essentially. Uh, let's take a look at a ban just so we know what they are like, um, and if they're going to be problematic, because they too make some demands of us. He is a legendary organizer. Interesting. So we may, they may get other um, jobs in, in here as well. Uh, let's check personality and preferences. Native copper, nickel, silver, plum, color pearl, leggings, barrels, and alpacas. Well, hmm. I don't think the fact that we slaughtered that alpaca is relevant at the moment, um, but leggings and barrels, that's not the worst thing in the world. Giant moose, sewer brew, and coffee cherries. Yeah, that shouldn't be too bad from a trait standpoint. Let's see here. Um, now, if I remember correctly, manager, uh, I know Santa is our manager currently, but a ban is going to take over because that's dependent on that and they're going to be getting an office anyway so they may as well be our manager all right yeah we just need to build up our our thing here it looks like we need everything except a tomb so not quite as in-depth as as what the baron demands but still and they want two chests a cabinet and a spiffier bedroom and their own uh their own study and their own dining room. But of course they need the study now for, for being a manager too. But that's fine because that frees up uh, Sanet to, um, that frees Sanet to be a full, to, to continue being a uh, legendary herbalist and herbalizing the ever living heck out of everything. So that works out well. All right, I'll probably plan this in, in between episodes. The, um, um, uh, we'll plan out their, their stuff as well so that they get that built. We have a lot of other things that are demanding our attention anyway. Oh yeah, I forgot. So this, now that we've created this, we can assign this to the Silvery Dawns. You guys have suggestions for the, uh, squad names? Um, feel free to make it. Uh, we'll train here, store their weapons here, ammunition there. They don't sleep there though. Because this isn't really like fully fleshed out at the moment. Um, this is just an outdoor space. We will make it a, a proper space in due time. And I think all of our actually now that I now that we got a bunch of new people in, let's see if we have more miners that need to be assigned to be miners. Mm, I don't think we actually got any new miners. Unfortunate. We could grab a couple of peasants for that though. Because we need a few more miners just to get stuff going. I'm not necessarily going to add them to the mm squad, to the rust picks. That's the other thing I forgot. Yeah, I got that bismuth, but I forgot to order tin, so we still can't make bismuth bronze because you need a little tin for that too. So double fail on the trade for me there. But eh, we'll live, I think. We just didn't get the epic toy payoff. Right now, like, the humans have been more lucrative as a trading partner to us than our, our dwarves in general. All right, so, and down here, I think we should be... All right, they're starting to dig that out, good. If we dip into the aquifer, we could actually get the moat to fill itself. That way it could... Uh... All right, we got all of our bedrooms here, so let me uh, let me get these sorted out real quick. All right, they're not the furniture's not all built. All right, well we might as well grab the bedrooms that we can, bedrooms that will count as bedrooms, just to get dwarves in there, so we don't have people outside. You do need the door, a, bo a bed and a door are like the bare minimums. The other stuff is kind of fluff, but good fluff because that makes the bedroom more valuable and thus makes them happier. And yeah, a lot of our miners are still working on engraving and spiffing things up. I might actually de-designate 
this area for engraving just so that they're not wasting time on that and actually we can we need our miners to do other stuff we can we can engrave later and that should get everybody in there all right how are we doing up here yes we are starting to dig out the moat here I'm not sure why they have they're they're holding off on you know sawing this down because we kind of need them to do that but they we also need them to do this so this is working out just fine either way it's gonna be a little a little less convenient for them also how are we doing down here with our all right yeah they haven't started into they haven't started tapping into this yet because we designated the moat first so we're gonna let them finish the moat and then we'll deal with the punching through the uh, aquifer again we have more than enough food to to survive winter so that'd be ooh masterpiece iron greaves not bad not bad if i do say so myself all right well this is map looking out to be pretty good here pretty soon we will be more and more defensible here so just just wait just you wait we'll be we'll be getting there if you guys like this episode and you want to see more like it, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and leave me a comment. Good, bad, or indifferent, your feedback's always welcome. So until next time, it's been Pinstar signing out. See ya!